All right, <laughs> welcome back to the channel. And today we have a pleasant, very, very pleasant surprise uh, because I'm with my friend, Joanna. Uh, so, okay, I introduce her. So, who are you? I'm Joanna. Okay. Uh, I was born in Athens and I lived the first 23 years of my life there. Okay, okay. So, you are fairly Greek, we can say. Okay, <laughs> Greek enough. So, okay, uh, what did you study? Well, I studied political science, uh, public policy and economics, and then I did here my master's in comparative public policy. And I did a lot of political philosophy as expected in the degrees. All right. So, okay, you may wonder why uh, is she here? So uh, the answer is that, okay, uh, she's very knowledgeable about ancient Greek, but she studied it being Greek. And the several differences, I would say, between the way we teach ancient Greek and the way actual Greeks that are in, indeed alive <laughs> nowadays uh, speak the language. So, Joanna, did you learn ancient Greek at any point uh, in, in your life? At many points. Um, okay. So, we so, start okay. learning ancient Greek at taking courses of ancient Greek when we turn 12. Uh, so, basically, when we finish primary school. Uh, it starts with a short introduction, getting into the um, real thing a bit later after two, three years. In the beginning, we just learn uh, like alphabet and the accents, which is <laughs> one of the difficult parts. <laughs> and we never learn the breathings. Um, and then when okay. we reach the final two years of high school, we can actually select to take extra courses of ancient Greek. So it's like the classical studies direction of studies, okay. let's say. All right. So how normal it is for, you know, a regular Greek child or a teenager to learn ancient Greek? How regular? No, how normal it is. I mean, uh, do everyone study this or oh, yeah. you can skip it somehow? Or... Uh, you cannot. Absolutely mandatory then. It's uh, So at some point we had the um, this new type of high schools. Um, mm -hmm. But I can remember if there are also secondary schools like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like the the ones that people go and they have the choice not to take ancient Greek or okay. as a course. Yeah, but um, but most Greeks will take these courses of ancient Greek. Then. I think when you go to secondary school, like for at least three years, mm -hmm. you don't have any other choice because this is when the compulsory education ends. So right. for okay. at least three years, you need no matter what. Okay. Okay. So cool! It's a, it's a it's a nice way to you know engage with with uh, your roots, let's say. But uh, as you will soon realize, uh, there are several differences in approach. And um, if you look at uh, ancient Greek and then you go to Greece, uh, some things may make sense. That's my experience actually. <laughs> um, but especially when it's written, yeah, things make sense. But then you listen to things and then you don't understand much. Uh, so you are forced to learn uh, modern Greek as well. It's called modern, uh, just to make a difference with the ancient Greek. Uh, in, in this is a convention, but uh, it's not like yeah, the old good, good old-fashioned Greek versus this modern version. No, some people would like to think of that I think, but um, but no, in general, it's just a technical difference and it doesn't mean anything else. So uh, what we, what we will do now is to read. A piece of a very famous ancient Greek text that we will not reveal yet. Um, I will go first. Uh, I hope not to embarrass myself. And uh, yes, please pay attention to her reactions because uh, in my experience with my Greek friends, when I read ancient Greek, uh, this seems almost uh, outrageous, uh, like I'm killing their culture somehow. Uh, but I tr trust me, the way I'm going to read this is the standard way in which in all countries, uh, you learn this language. So, okay, I'll go ahead. Um, Meta tauta de eipon, apeikason toyuto e pathei, ten gemeteran fusin paideias te perikaia paideisias. Idegar anthropus hoion en katageioi, oikeseis pelaiodei. Anapeptamenen prostofos ten eisodon e husei macran para pan to spelaion. En tautei... Tos pelayon. Oh. <laughs> Tos pelayon. En tautei, eh, ek paidon ontas, en desmois kaita skele kaitus au, <laughs> augenas. Eh, hoste menein, 
de autus eis de to prosten monon joran, cycloi de tascefalas hypo tu desmu adunatus um, periagen, fos de autois pyros anothen, cae porrothen, caomenon e opisten auton, metaxu de tu pyros cae ton desmoton, e, e pano, <laughs> yeah, suffer, e, 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 I lost the line, sorry, um, e pano jodon. Um, Pargeni de eh, teijion, eh, paroicoido <laughs> memenon, hosper tois thaumatopoyois, uh, thaumatopoyois, eh. <laughs> um, proton anthropon, proceitai ta parafragmata, eh, hyperhon ta thaumata eh, de ignuasin. So, pre brace yourself, now comes the deep shock, uh, because I, I think I read it fairly well. Uh, for my standards, of course. Um, but now, okay, check the difference. I, by the way, I understood five words from what you said. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's very encouraging. Uh, very kind of you. Okay. So, μετά τα αυτά δι, είπων, απήκασον τι ούτω πάθη την μετέρα φύσην παιδείας θε, περί και απαιδευσίας. Η δε γάρ ανθρώπους ίον εν καταργείο, εν καταγείο, sorry, η κοίηση σπηλαιόδη, Αναπετετρα... Αναπεπταμένη. It's a difficult text, by the way. <laughs> I haven't practiced, yeah? No, no, yeah, but, but even for someone who's used to this alphabet, you know, it, it's a very difficult text indeed. So, yeah. Αναπεπταμένη προς το φως την είσοδον εχούσιν, μακράν, παραπάνω το σπήλαιον, εν ταύτη εκπαίδων όντας, εν δεσμής και τα σκέλη και τους αφιένας, Ωστε μένειν τε αυτού, ει τότε πρόσθεν μόνον οράν κύκλο, δε τα σκεφαλά, υπό του δεσμού, αδυνάτου περιάγειν, φω δε αυτή σπυρό άνωθεν και πόροθεν, καόμενον όπισθεν αυτών, μεταξύ δε του πυρό και των δεσμοτών επάνω οδών, παρίνει δε τυχίων παροκο... παρικοδομημένων, ω περ τη θαυματοποιή, πρώτων ανθρώπων πρόκειται τα παραφράγματα, υπέρ ον τα θαύματα δεικνύαση. Wow. Okay. I don't know if I don't know if you know you noticed a difference, uh, but there are many, many, and it, it sounds like two different languages. Even I don't know what do you think of these differences. Yeah. Right? What's your aesthetic reaction to the way I read it? So it's not just an aesthetic reaction; it's just a completely different way of understanding words. And when we try to communicate, like in normal life, we go out and I want to say something in Greek because I know he's going to understand. And then it takes some time to process <laughs> the accent and the pronunciation with the Erasmian way. So, yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so now that you mentioned it, because I, I haven't so far in the channel, um, the Erasmian way, way uh, thanks to Erasmus of Rotterdam, uh, that's the, let's say, orthodox way, uh, like the, the, the main convention um, for uh, reading and pronouncing uh, uh, ancient Greek. So that way was quickly lost uh, during the 20th century, I would say at least, uh, in, in, in Greece. And uh, they speak the way they do now. But many of the, um, uh, let's say, symbols, let's say, or these uh, grammatical little pieces um, were present in uh, Kavafis, for instance. Uh, he has that, but uh, the way you pronounce it is not the same, but you accept it as, okay, you can be there, but still you pronounce it in a different way. And um, one of the main differences also is the accentuation, as you were saying, like the accents. Uh, ancient Greek has three kind of accents, and, and in the channel we will go deeper into this later, um, whereas modern Greek has just one. Exactly. But that's something that has been through advancement, so there are still people that support, like highly support that this kind of uh, accent should mm -hmm. come back. And actually when my parents, mm -hmm. when my mother like was at school, that, that not that long ago, uh, like, I don't know, 20 years ago, 30, um, she used to use like all of these three accents. But oh, oh, this changed. Yeah, so it's a very recent change, and and it's not the only language who which experienced uh, this uh, these changes. Like for instance, uh, Mandarin and Chinese Mandarin also uh, went through a massive simplification of everything, just you know, popularize it or spread it, um, spread it across, across the country. So. Um, yeah, we can say the same uh, about Greek, uh, but when we read the Greek and um, 
uh, at least uh, this uh, mutual experience, I, I can bet that you read this and you got part got part of the meaning, right? Yes, you yeah. understood the, the full yeah. thing. Yeah. So it's similar to my experience in a more modest way. I, I'm not fluent in modern Greek. I understand some, some things, uh, thanks to my Greek friends. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I'm, I'm stronger in ancient Greek, let's say. And, and yeah, I can understand some things, get some things. So they're deeply linked, uh, let's say. So... Uh, do you know what text this is? Yes, I know. What okay, <laughs> what's the name of the text? <laughs> um, English, like the your way, English, whatever. Go yeah, on. it's a part of the Republic, like Politia, right. Politia Platonus from Plato, and mm-hmm. um, like just describing um, a moment from this parable of the um, the cave. Is it the yes. cave in English? Yes. Yeah, the cave. Yes. The allegory of the cave. The spillo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Explaining um, how it's gonna be when you go out. <laughs> so did you read this when you were studying ancient Greek in Greece? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I did, yes. Yeah, yeah. And I think anyone who studies philosophy also, yeah, it is like a mandatory piece of text that you must read, regardless of the language. Um, so yeah, you said um, Politia Platonas. Uh, in, ancient, in my pronunciation, okay, let's say mine, but okay, in the standard ancient Greek pronunciation, we would say Politeia. Uh, and okay, and she breathes now. She suffers because I, I, I've seen this reaction in many of my Greek friends. Uh, yeah, uh, I pronounce ancient Greek, and they are like, Ugh. "Can you describe this feeling?" Like, uh, yeah, I can't describe it because first things first, Greek people never assume that anybody else can speak or read their language. <laughs> so reading their language and mispronouncing words is just too much. <laughs> Who can take that? Come on. <laughs> Just have some patience. Like, and you should be so proud yeah. that we want to learn your culture. First of all, is culture. this thing that we can either expect like people to say Calimera and Calispera, you know, <laughs> with, um, with that accent. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> as tourists, but we In, never... instead of instead of Calimera and Calispera. That's the, the, the yeah. You, it's a, it should sound. But then when you go and you understand and you broaden a bit your horizons, understanding that many people have actually learned or studied some kind of ancient Greek and text and they have a different way of pronouncing the words. <sighs> <laughs> so yeah, they're the people more sensitive to, you know, the orthodox way or the way it should be, uh, whatever there should be is. Um, all right. So, well, I, I wanted to uh, point out to key differences between ancient and modern Greek uh, with you. Um, and the first one is called, in, in the technic- technical jargon, is called ioticism. Um, that mean, that comes from the letter iota, or iota. Um, so, do you know what this is? Yep, it's basically the disease that, you, <laughs> that modern Greek <laughs> have. So we pronounce every e as e, as iota. So there is no other sound that eta or y or any other e. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's pretty much it. Like there are many letters and also diphthongs. That means the combination of two letters in one syllable um, that sound exactly the same way. So if you have omicron yota, that sounds e. Epsilon yota e. Eta e. Yota e. Epsilon? E. It's exactly the same all the time. So if you say the word, um, okay, I would say in, this is only in ancient Greek, poiusin. How would you say that? Piusin? <laughs> so, so, almost yes. <laughs> so it's P, Omicron, Yota, Omicron, Epsilon. Yeah, Piusin. Piusin. Uh, Piusin? Did you say Piusin? Uh... P, Omicron, Yota. Omicron, Y. Piusin. Piusin, yes. Uh-huh. Um, uh, but if I say, yeah, um, poiesin with eta, then mm-hmm. it would be. Piusin. Yes. Piusin. Piusin. So, dramatic. Like the <laughs> so, because as a foreigner, for instance, if I hear piusin, I have no clue. Um, decoding process. Yeah, I, I, I must go undergo, let's say, a, a decoding process. But also, um, if I bumped into a, a new word, let's say, and I hear a yota, the, the yota sound in modern Greek, I have no clue how to write it unless I can spot the root in ancient Greek. That's my case. 
and um, it will be nice to have in the future someone who learned Greek, like modern Greek, um, from scratch and not having any ancient Greek background. Uh, it would be interesting to, I'll find someone, I promise. Um, or if you know someone, you can uh, uh, give me the contact details. Like, uh, we can have a Skype call or anything. Um, so yeah, to, to ask how difficult this was for, for someone who has no you know, background in, 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 in the ancient Greek thing. Uh, so, and the other difference I wanted to highlight with you is the Y sound, because uh, by itself, Y sounds E, like it's one of the, uh, yeah. uh, the letters that suffered this uh, ioticism phenomenon. But, um, but for instance, uh, how do you say freedom in uh, ancient Greek? Eleftheria. Sorry, in, okay, in Greek, eleftheria, right? I would say eleutheria, because in, in our pronunciation, um, y has a u sound, like, uh, as explained now in a previous video, like the u of the u with umlaut in German, uh. or the u in French, like musique, I think that was the example I used last time. Um, so, and, and you keep that strictly unless it's, uh, for, uh, ne sorry, it's after uh, Omicron, and it would be u, uh, or after an alpha, it would be au. Um, so I say, for instance, autos. Aftos. Aftos, you say, for instance. Uh, auton. Afton. Uh, auto. Afto. Yeah. That, 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 uh, I use that example all the time because it's a very, very common uh, Greek word. That you use it every day, I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. yeah. What does it mean? Alpha, epsilon, mm -hmm. or epsilon, epsilon. They can either produce the sound of F, mm -hmm. af, or ev, av, yeah. like respectively. I think I said it the other way around, but you get what I mean. <laughs> Can you give an example? Yeah, so the well, the example you gave was with eleftheria, this becomes yeah. f. Uh, you can say evimeria, this becomes like a v, like mm -hmm. alpha, vita. What does it mean? Like evimeria, um, the prosperity. Mm -hmm. Like good day, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Then you can say afto, mm -hmm. like... Uh, or with vu you can say avro, which means like um, egg. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Important vocabulary we're learning here. Um, so yeah, it, it, it has three sounds at least. So, and uh, yeah, well, you correct me, but uh, I think the rule is that if it's followed by a consonant, you you have this f sound, like a left mm -hmm. area. You have a theta following, so you have this sound, but it's a particular kind of consonant because in the kind of Afko, it sounds less than an F, but rather like uh, Yeah, so you can either go with Vita mm -hmm. or with F. F. Is that optional? N no, it depends on the word. Okay. Like so the way you pronounce it depends this. on the word. Um, but that's, again, a very, very usual root of confusion when Greek people start to write and learn how to write words correctly. And the first thing that comes into your mind when you hear the word Afro is to write it with a Vita. Right. Yeah. The first and instinct. Yeah, mean. the yeah. first instinct, yes. body, right? Uh, but then you learn that you should go like the other way around and start <laughs> thinking of how it's written like properly because of whatever, it, like the root of the of the word basically, but yeah. Okay. So yeah, just to wrap up now, um, do you have any tips uh, that you would like to give to anyone who's learning ancient Greek or encourage someone to learn modern Greek or yeah? Uh, <laughs> whatever <laughs> I think okay I'll be, be honest, honest. Come on, yeah <laughs> yeah I'll be honest I think if you start learning modern Greek um, you might learn useful words that you can find in ancient Greek as well but I think it's gonna be more confusing for you and it is also for pe native speakers of modern Greek many days we see a word that we use in modern Greek but then ancient Greek has a completely different meaning yeah true like aftos that we said before in like modern Greek it means he like this guy and in ancient Greek it means that, like the same yeah. like aftos. so yeah I think at some points it can be like fulfilling for some <laughs> things but it can really be confusing at other points <clears throat> yes. particularly with the pronunciation part okay, so you would say it's difficult but if you wanted to make people's lives easier mm -hmm. uh, would you recommend uh, learning also modern Greek to ease your way through ancient Greek or no. Or... I would say I would highly encourage people to learn more modern Greek if they're interested in the ancients 
uh, part if they're right. studying linguistics or if they are interested in philosophy so they can go and actually read some Greek texts written by Greek people that are hardly ever published in the world outside of yeah. Greece because we are really poor and it's not that <laughs> often to get funding and yes. spread the word, you know? Yes, okay. Well, thank you very much, Joanna. You're welcome. Yes, so uh, I hope you like this uh, because this is a very hot debate, especially in uh, the niche circles, let's say, of uh, both uh, philology and philosophy, but also it's very, you know, uh, I think it's a hot topic in Greece as well. Anytime I uh, bump into someone uh, and talk about ancient Greece, uh, Greek and, and, and ancient Greece in general, uh, and they, are, they have strong opinions on this matter. So I hope uh, you found this useful and okay, see you next time. Thank you.